It's Pi Augustine, your Division 1 candidate for Ipswich. My plan is for a community that is vibrant and attracts world investment. A community that is connected with the -the state-of-the-art transport system. A community that cares for our people and environment at a time of need. Division 1 needs a councillor that has the energy and motivation to get things done. A community champion. Find out more about me on my Facebook page, Pi Augustine for Division 1. This ad was approved by Pi Augustine Candidate. Ipswich deserves strong and stable leadership you know you can trust. I'm Mayor Teresa Harding, and as your Mayor, Ipswich is once again a city that businesses are proud to invest in and families love to call home. To keep our city moving forward, I'm committed to reducing cost of living pressures, expanding our road and transport networks, delivering more for our suburbs, and boosting investment in grassroots sports in our community. So vote one Teresa Harding for Mayor for sustainable growth through Ipswich. Authorised by T Harding, 264 South Station Road, Raceview. Coming up, LNP candidate for the Ipswich West by-election Darren Zano on why a sudden change of career direction and some of the key local issues which may decide the result. It's Friday, March 1, 2024, and I'm Alan Roebuck. Welcome to Ipswich Today, which acknowledges the traditional custodians of the land on which it is produced and pays respects to elders past, present and emerging. This podcast is supported by Kinetics, people-powered web hosting trusted by Australian businesses since 1999. No stranger to being in the public spotlight, Darren Zano is the LNP candidate for the Ipswich West by-election. And while he's campaigning, he stepped down from his role as president of Ipswich Show Society. Thanks for speaking with Ipswich Today, Darren Zano. Lovely to be with you, Alan. This is a change of direction for yourself, which surprised quite a few people. Why are you running? Well, Alan, since I've been lucky enough to um, to, to retire, uh, I've been uh, two years ago, I've been looking at, um, at the political landscape. Uh, and, of course, I've always been involved very heavily in the community uh, right throughout my work life um, and, you know, being on a number of um, associations and boards, et cetera, et cetera. And I look at Ipswich, and if you look a little bit, uh, scratch the surface and look a bit deeper, but we haven't been getting our fair share here in Ipswich. We're a safe Labor seat. Uh, we have four out of four uh, Labor members, uh, have had for a long time now. And when it comes to getting our fair share in Ipswich, that's the reason we don't, is because we're a safe Labor seat. And when I say getting our fair share, if you have a look at the spend uh, per person per capita of Queensland, right, right throughout Queensland, Ipswich, as we know, is the fastest growing city in Queensland, has been for a long time, will be for a long time yet. And yet the spend per capita is right down near the middle. Actually, it's just underneath the middle of, um, of where, we, uh, where we sit in terms of dollars per capita. And can I thought you, can you identify right. a couple of specific issues that were really front of mind for you? Um, well, firstly, crime is the number one thing. When I uh, work, you know, get around the, the, um, the community, uh, people are really hurting with crime. And I mean, when you look at the when you look at the statistics, robberies up 90 percent, assaults 401 percent, car theft 86 percent. Mate, there's people hurting in the community and there's a lot of victims of crime. Uh, and unfortunately, that's heading in the wrong direction. And look, that's straight. That sits right at Labor's at Labor's feet. The increase in crime, especially youth crime, um, the watering down of the laws over a number of years or a number of years ago has created whole um, a whole generation of youth that are now taunting police. Look, Alan, the other thing that the Queensland did, uh, the Queensland government, the Labor government, they took away a lot of the early intervention programs. And look, gold standard intervention programs are critical. Um, I'm not just saying that we need to lock these people up. That's not that's not the case. We need to have early intervention programs. We need to have uh, changes to the Youth Justice Act. There's a whole raft of things, Alan, that needs to happen. Uh, and all of these things need to work in sync so that we uh, we don't alienate our youth, but we get them back on track. And where Labor is not changing, one, they're not budging, but the LNP are very happy to fix the problem. There's a few key issues, some very exclusive to Ipswich West. So we'll move away from crime, which is a broader issue. Can I get your views on the Norman Street Bridge? It's been talked about for decades, but nothing seems to get past the talk. 
And that's the problem, Alan. We need the final business case, $4 million thereabouts, the final business case um, will cost for the Norman Street Bridge. Uh, and might I say, it's not just the Norman Street Bridge. Uh, we're looking at the um, uh, the Mount Crosby Interchange as an example. Uh, and, um, you know, we, we've, we've been through two drafts uh, of plans out there. And might I say, the residents out there still aren't happy with the second draft of plans. So we, the, these are things that we need to sort out and we need to get back on track with um, with those two as an example, those two major transport infrastructure programs. And of course, we're fast approaching the 2032 Olympic Games. And we certainly uh, want to make sure that Ipswich gets its fair share of infrastructure uh, as a result, as a legacy of those games. If you've been for a drive along Mount Crosby Road, uh, towards Carolee in the last couple of days, you would have noticed that every election sign has been defaced and it's all a consistent message that no politician, and regardless of party, can fix the problem. You're just going to bring more traffic. So it's it's obviously a very localised issue which could influence booths in that area. Exactly right, Alan. But look, might I say, um, I have uh, got some runs on the board when it comes to delivering for my community. As an example, after the 2011 flood, we had the Flood Commission of Inquiry, uh, and that was an absolute whitewash, and it didn't look like any any um, victim of the flood uh, was going to get anything uh, unless they had some sort of insurance, which a lot of people didn't have. Um, myself and, uh, and two other people, um, we weren't happy with the outcome of the first commission of inquiry. So we went right through the documentation and over a number of days and found a lot of inconsistencies. So what we did is we started leaking information to a guy by the name of Headley Thomas of The Australian. Uh, and if you remember back in those days, uh, after a period of about um, two months, we were able to get enough information into the media to force the state government, the state Labor government, to reopen the Commission of Inquiry uh, and to, um, and to um, um, have a second go at it, of which um, the end result, only recently, the last couple of years, has been a $550 million payout um, to flood victims. So had, uh, had the three of us not uh, done that, probably nothing would have happened. So that's sort of something that um, I'm quite proud of, um, that, um, because you know, Ipswich is the seventh most flooded city in Queensland, and um, there was a lot of people that have been hurting because of that, and at least we were able to deliver something. And secondly, might I say, um, through you know, being involved in the show society for nearly 40 years now, um, and being president for the last three, vice president before then. Uh, I've been the one that has certainly pushed uh, to get funding from the federal government in particular um, so that we can better we can have better facilities uh, should we have uh, an emergency uh, and a need for um, a disaster, you know, since 2011. And since then, we actually have opened the showgrounds seven times as either a refuge centre or an um, emergency evacuation centre. And look, I've been successful in getting $14.4 million, uh, as an investment into the showground. So um, having said that, Alan, I've sort of always thought, well, if I can do that from outside of being a politician, I wonder what I could do being a politician. Well, here's one for you. The Bremer River Westbound Bridge. We're all fairly familiar now that it's got a bit of a problem. I feel there's a crisis looming here. If this bridge is closed for an extended period, there's been a lot of talk behind the scenes. Do they build another bridge? Do they fix this one? Uh, what do you know about the current state of the older bridge? So, uh, obviously, it, it failed an engineering test. Um, the, 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 the westbound um, bridge on the eastern side of the river has failed. Um, and I do know that there is uh, a lot of, uh, and look, they're, they're, it's going to be fixed. How long uh, and how much it's going to cost, we don't know. How long it may be out of service, we still don't know. Um, but uh, that's something to watch um, because it just concerns me that there's uh, a number of bridges uh, throughout Ipswich West and even throughout Queensland um, that could be in the same could be in the same boat. I wrote a column in local Ipswich News uh, reviving the idea of an Ipswich Performing Arts Centre, a major centre, much larger than the Civic Centre is now. I've had some interesting feedback from people who would love to see that happen. If elected, will you be advocating for state funding? Well, I've, um, uh, as part of um, my role at the showgrounds, we've actually um, got shovel ready, uh, fully approved, uh, a convention and exhibition centre for the showgrounds, around $180 million 
Convention and Exhibition Centre. Uh, and when we've um, when we designed that centre uh, over the last eight years, we've put some smarts in that, which could um, host three different um, uh, three different sports for the Olympics in 2032. Now, when it comes to the uh, using that centre as a performing arts centre, uh, you certainly could do the same. So we could have a multi-purpose centre uh, built at the Ipswich Showgrounds, which would only be a couple of hundred metres from the Ipswich to Springfield rail line, the proposed one, uh, where people could go and they could enjoy performing arts. Um, they could enjoy uh, a home show or they could enjoy a um, you know a live performance, maybe even by Taylor Swift. Uh, <laughs> and... <laughs> Uh, and look, that centre would be an absolute boon for um, bringing people to Ipswich. So that's shovel ready, ready to go. Um, it's about $185 million investment. Um, and look, that's only one of, of a number of um, of things in Ipswich that we could bring to Ipswich, including a performing arts centre. If if, um, if we feel that, um, that the the convention exhibition centre um, is, you know, is not not capable of, um, you know, large-scale performing arts. Uh, certainly I would advocate, Alan, for um, for any infrastructure in Ipswich that's going to better our lives. An issue every election is where roadside election signs go missing, and it's not just one party. It happens to all candidates. How are you faring this election? Have you lost a few signs? Oh, mate, election signs are absolute pain in the backside, I can tell you right now. <laughs> and I'm a candidate... <laughs> So um, I've put out 230 signs, lost between 80 and 100 so far, uh, and had a couple vandalised. So, look, you know, when it comes to signs being vandalised, Alan, you know, I get it. You know, people don't like politics for uh, a long time now. Um, you know, uh, people get really turned off politics because there's so much, so many gotcha moments. There's so much that is staged, et cetera, et cetera. But um, made election signs, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Unfortunately, they're a necessary evil in a campaign. The seat of Ipswich West has been held by Labor most of its life. Labor has been defeated three times, though, uh, after the seat was created in 1960. The last time was when Sean Choate took the seat for the LNP for one term. So it's not inconceivable that you could win. Your social media shows you out and about door knocking. What's been the reaction from voters one-on-one? Very positive, Alan. Very, very positive. And look, what the voters are talking about is uh, cost of living, crime, health, um, uh, in particular health. So, um, you know, I just it, it's resonating with people at the moment. And, and certainly a lot of people uh, know me through my, either my work life or through um, the show Society. And um, certainly a lot of people understand what I've done for the community and are very happy to support me um, moving into politics. And that's so, always an interesting thing to analyse too at each election. How much is a personal vote and how much is a party vote? Well, that's exactly right. Might I, might I say my, uh, my values uh, align with uh, the LNP's values. I think that you know, moving forward, uh, if I was um, successful enough in, in Ipswich West, I know that I would be a very strong advocate and would be um, certainly knocking on many, many doors um, to get change. It's a funny thing at election time. Rarely does a candidate get told by voters face-to-face that they're not going to vote for you. What's been your experience so far? With the amount of people I've spoken to, Alan, I would say 5% have said they're not voting for me. The LNP hosted a Queensland Health town hall style meeting this week in Ipswich. Was that the first time you've attended that style of community meeting? It is. That was the 37th um, um, health forum that's been that's been run by the LNP right across Queensland. Um, And I think it's important because so we're going to a state election in in October. This is obviously a by-election, but um, the LNP is certainly. Uh, got their ears on right now, and they're forming policy. Uh, But to form good policy, you need to understand and you need to listen. Uh, And that's exactly what's happening right now. And these um, town halls, so there's there's crime town halls and there's um, there's health town halls um, right across Queensland, and that is all auguring into putting information in to ensure that that we have the right priorities for Queensland because, hey, our priorities are a, a true reflection of Queenslanders' priorities. 
Do you know how the audience is selected for those town halls? Uh, we put out an email uh, and we also put out um, messages uh, to invite people along to those town halls. Uh, and obviously we want people along there that have had experiences, whether they be good or bad, um, with the health system or with crime, uh, depending on the forum, of course. So um, we we um, we try to source from anywhere in the community uh, people to come along uh, and share their experience so that we can then better understand how we may change legislation to fix problems. Over the last 25 years, I've had the pleasure of attending Ipswich Emergency a number of times, not the least of which was when uh, my mother had, had a stroke. And I can't praise the palliative care staff enough, but it's clear that, that Ipswich Emergency is overloaded. Unfortunately, Alan, and look, not for one second, not for one second, and I must reiterate on this, am I having a go at our, um, our, our frontline staff, whether it be police, whether it be nurses, doctors, um, other, other health professionals, uh, it's the system in the background that's broken. Uh, and unfortunately, we need to get doctors and nurses back into making decisions uh, on the front line in our hospitals, not bureaucrats. Uh, might I say, in December, uh, 60% ramping at Ipswich Hospital, 60%, like that's out of control. Uh, and the system's broken, and we certainly uh, understand and are understanding more and more every day what we need to do to fix it. Darren Zano, we'll leave it there. Thanks so much for speaking with Ipswich today. Thanks, Alan. And that's it for this episode. Just a reminder, you'll find handy links in the show notes. Ipswich today is supported by Kinetics people-powered web hosting trusted by Australian businesses since 1999. This podcast is listener supported. Please make a once-only gift or regular donation to help keep it online. Just go to ipswichtoday.com.au. Follow and stream this podcast from your favourite app, including iHeartRadio, or play Ipswich Today on smart speakers. Music is supplied by Purple Planet Music. This is Alan Roebuck. Thank you for listening. From legendary locals we all know to people you should get to know. Follow Ipswich Today on your favourite app and never miss an episode or go to ipswichtoday.com.au.